we're going to proceed to calibrating our tank. So we touch on the wrench, the product. We've got wheat in tank one, four, and three we've got rye, and tank two we've got wheat. So we'll touch on the icon to start the calibration. Okay, so our tanks are off. We can turn them on with the virtual screen or the switch box, the ones we want to calibrate, or the switch box on the air seeder. Thanks. One, two, three, four. The green light will come on and then a red light will start flashing, indicating it's ready to start calibration. For today, we're just going to calibrate tanks one, but you can calibrate all four tanks at once if you choose. We don't have to return back to the cab to finish our calibration. We have to first engage the hydraulics for fan one. On our Borgo air seeders, we have a electrohydraulic valve. We have a remote that links to that valve. So I'll turn the power on. And presently it's in a fill mode. Fill mode means that oil has been diverted from the fan one to this valve. So we have to have our fan one running. I'll engage it shortly to show you. So I have a fan button. Then we press the bottom button in the lower right hand corner that says fill first. Fill at the top. Press it a second time and it goes to fill cal. You can hear the oil bypassing the circuit to give oil to the metering circuit so we can run our calibration. So when we calibrate our Borgo air seeder, we want to, um, first we want to figure out how many pounds of product are produced with each revolution of the metering auger. We have a hydraulic motor, PWM controlled motor, that drives our metering augers. We have three ranges to achieve the various high and low rates. There's a decal on the side. So high range is the big driver and the small driven. Low range is small driver, big driven. Each auger has a stamp on this end. This one says HX, that means it's a high output. Designed for high rates of product delivery. Then we have a 1X our next biggest auger, and then a 2X, and then we have a new LO, low output auger, designed for the more accurate low rates. Okay, so we have to divert product from the metering drive via this hose, take it out of the airstream that the product was being delivered to, and put the hose into this spout going into a pail. Then we'll have to meter out product. The monitor knows how many RPM the shaft has turned. We enter the weight and it, it uh, spits out a rate based on the, on the speed. So first of all we're going to want to make sure we zero our scale. So what that means is we don't want to weigh the pail, we want to weigh the, weigh the product. So our new digital scale has the ability to hold a tear. That means it'll hold the weight of the bucket. So press it to turn it on. Hang one of the calibration pails, they're all the same weight. Press and hold the zero button for a few seconds. Release it with the pail hanging. It should be very close to zero. 
with the pail hanging. When I take the pail off, it'll read a number, two point something. And right beside the tear, there's a little tick indicating that's the tear weight. Every time you pick up the scale and turn it on, look for that tear weight of those pails so that you haven't inadvertently zeroed it with no pail on. That would give you an inaccurate seating rate. We have the ability to calibrate all four of our tanks at once if we want. When they're active and ready, the red light flashes across. The green light indicates that's the ones we're going to calibrate. We only have product in tank one. So we're just going to calibrate tank one for now. So we have our pail in there and we'll hit our master. We don't want to prime our auger. We don't want to measure empty revolutions. So we've got to get a little bit of product in the auger first. So we engage this to make sure we have some wheat or product in that metering auger. Then because all the pails are the same, you can take a different pail, put it underneath. We don't want to weigh this product. We don't want to add to that product. We want to reset that. We can reset it here or in the cab. So if I press this reset button, a green light will flash, indicating that it's reset on the monitor. The monitor was counting revolutions when it was turning. And you can verify that the first time to make sure that it's done that function. And after that, you can trust that it'll do that every time for you. So we're sitting ready to calibrate tank one. We'll engage our clutch. We want to pull off about two thirds of a pail. The larger the sample, the more accurate our pounds per revolution calibrate, uh, calculation will be. But we don't want to get too much product because the scale only goes up to about 50 pounds. Now that we've gathered a good sized sample of product, we have to weigh our product for each individual tank. Today we're just calibrating wheat, so we'll take the product, make sure our scale shows the tear. This one's showing 2.9 pounds, weight of a bucket. Hang it on the scale. It's showing 32.75 pounds of product. So next we have to go back into our monitor. And our estimated weight, it says our wheat tank is on. I can turn it off in the tank cab here, off. Our estimated weight is 16.26 pounds. But if you remember, I put a fictitious cal factor to get an initial start on this product. So I hit the advance arrow and then it comes up estimated weight and actual weight. So we touch on the, our actual weight, 32.75, check mark, and advance. It gives us an old cal factor, 0 0.20, the one I entered and a new cal factor, 0 0.403. Typically the high output augers have a number that's 0.4 something and the smaller augers have a lower cal factor because they put out less product. We can choose to save it or ignore it. We will save the new cal factor and we're gonna run another calibration to verify it. So we can save them all, reject them all, or save the one we want to. We'll save this one, the check mark. Now we're gonna enter calibration one more time. We're gonna start with a new cal factor. We're back down to zero revs, zero estimated weight, and we have to pull off one more sample. We don't have to prime our augers a second time because they're already primed with this product. We'll turn on tank one. 
we're going to start our metering auger, stop our auger, check our scale to make sure it shows that 2.9 tera weight. Twenty six point two pounds. Back to the cab. It expects twenty five point eight nine. Very close. So that verified their first calibration. So we'll advance. Estimates twenty five point eight nine. We're going to touch the weight twenty six point two. We're going to advance. 1.2% difference. Very accurate. If you're within 10%, you won't have to run another sample. If you're over 10%, you should run another sample till you are dialed right in so you know the pounds per revolution are proper. Again, we can reject them all, the top button, save them all, or select the one we want to save and hit save. Then we simply return back to our operating screen. Our tank one is on. We can turn on our tanks, engage our clutch and proceed seating. Thank you.